Welcome back to another episode of Grant Thornton's podcast, where today we'll be discussing the emerging aging population issue facing Thailand. Normally I would be interviewing different business leaders, but today I'm delighted to be welcoming our very own Chris Cracknell, the chairman of Grant Thornton, and Chris needs no introduction. So Chris, welcome to today's podcast. Thank you, Ian. Delighted to be here. Great. We talk about the aging population issue in Thailand. Exactly what is that problem and why is it such a problem? Well, I think to understand the problem, Ian, we need to just look back at history a little bit. 1950s, Thailand had a population of around sort of 20 million, 20, 21 million. Today we have a population of 70 million plus. And so the population has grown. But actually the real growth in the population took place in the 60s, 70s and 80s. And, and during that time, from 1963 to 1983, there were over a million births per annum against a smaller population than we have today. So we had this bulge of a workforce that, or, or kids that were growing up and became part of the workforce right at the same time that economic growth took off here in Thailand. Availability of labour, people were here to do things, they were keen to learn and all moving forward. And if we look at a situation today, birth rates have actually unfortunately dropped to below 600,000 births per annum. And if we look at fertility rates as a judgment point, the fertility rate for a replacement population is about 2.1. Today, Thailand's fertility rate is 1.5 and falling. So looking forward from now into the future, we predict quite clearly there is going to be a reduction in the workforce available. And in addition, there's going to be an aging population over 65 that has to be looked after by government and by the state. And this is going to be the real challenge for Thailand going forward. Yeah, I, th I recall some years ago, I, I think I likened the, the population demographics of Thailand to a Thailand temple, mm. if you, with, the, with the, the, the aged at the top and thing, and that seems to be, that bulge at the bottom of, of the temple is, is moving up, you're saying? Absolutely, and, and it's the burden it's going to place upon Thailand. I mean, firstly, for businesses, they're going to have less people to recruit. Um, COVID has in many ways concealed this problem, although statistically it's, it's been known or could be analysed years ago. COVID has been the focus for the last two, three years for most organisations. The great resignation, we're all worried that that's the reason people aren't coming back. Yes, it's absolutely changed people's attitudes towards work, but actually the real underlying issue now going forward is a reducing workforce and an ageing population. Right at this moment in time, for every 100 workers aged between 15 and 65, they are looking after 42 people who are not working, i.e. below 15 and over 65. And these numbers are going to get worse. So how will we pay for aged care, health care for the elderly who are living longer and longer, primarily because of better health care already? Mm -hmm. sure. so the population, those paying taxes, the workforce, will have to fund this growing age population. So I think from a government perspective, there are challenges that they need to analyse and work out solutions. And in, from a business point of view, businesses are going to have to work out how they're going to keep staff, train staff, increase productivity with a smaller workforce available. And I guess that foreign labour coming in is only part of the solution. We actually need to get productivity out of the Thai population. So we're rapidly heading towards 50% of the population is going to not be working. That's a massive amount. Well, I, 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 think, I think, you know, we're going to become a super-aged population here mm -hmm. in Thailand in about 1930, uh, sorry, 2035. Right. Uh, get my years right. 2035 um, will be a super-aged population here. And that's very similar to the situation Japan finds itself in now. And this does place a different pressure upon government, on taxation, and on employment going forward. It's a different economy. One side of it though is, is very positive. An aged population is a new market. Aged sure. care facilities, telemedicine, a whole host of other businesses will emerge. But that's, that's great and positive and they'll use technology and things. But for traditional manufacturing, if Thailand thinks it's going to compete with Philippines, Indonesia, Vietnam for cheap labor or India for cheap labor, those days are gone. So it must focus on productivity 
and ways of achieving that with the workforce. Okay. So what should the government be looking at? Now, I mean, obviously, we've got a government that's in an interesting state at the moment. But what should this government and future governments be doing to address this issue? Well, in one hand, I'm, I'm actually quite complimentary of the government because I think their longer term vision uh, with the Biocircular Green Initiative and the points that brings out, the focus on technology, Thailand 4.0, a lot of that forward visioning is very good. However, it's the path from now to get to that future yeah. point that's absolutely critical. And I think that more effort and focus needs to go there. My top runners for government to focus on is one, review of the tax situation, how are we going to fund aged care, health care in Thailand longer term. Fine for the very rich at the moment, they will be able to afford it, but we're going to have less wealthy people coming through into that aged population and they won't be without government support. So that needs to be discussed more openly. Increase in tax, how will that go down? Secondly, education, and this for me is probably the biggest point. I think there is a need to move from rote learning into more inquisitive learning. And the reason I say this is because the workforce of tomorrow is going to need to be able to make decisions, to act and interpret data and carry out actions and not just follow a rule book, as perhaps has been the case for many in the past. Thailand itself has already moved from an agricultural economy to an urbanized economy this year, in fact, with over 50%. It now needs to go to the next stage and have really what is a more complete, in my opinion, educational approach with the skills needed for tomorrow. And it's going to take a long time for that to work through society. Other things they could also consider is changes to employment law. Um, employment law has actually served the country very well and served the population very well. It has offered protection and continuity and it has done all the things it was initially intended to do. But that was with a growing population. Now we have a shrinking population, we want more mobility of labour. We don't want necessarily people to stay in jobs lowly paid or with little demand just because they're accruing a very large pension for the future. We actually want to encourage movement to earn more money, to contribute more to uh, business and to the economy of Thailand. And that flexibility is stifled at the moment by current employment law. Definitely is. So a big change there, I think, would help with mobility. Next, foreign workers, ease of access. I think we can allow more foreign workers in, against, especially in the sort of skilled area into Thailand, but I don't put this forward as a sole solution by any means and I would prefer to see the focus on Thailand Thai people being given the right skills to move forward. And I think businesses are going to make different demands of employees going forward and those demands are going to change more quickly. So skills training available not just up through the education process to post university but continuous education all the way up until your 60s to allow the workforce to get the skills it needs to be more mobile and change the adapting needs of business. Good. I know there are some grants available from the government for moving to an, autom an automation within their business. Is that enough? Um, I think they're going to have to do more. I mean, business has to play its part here mm -hmm. as well. I don't, it is wrong to say we're, we're looking to government to support everything exactly. because actually it's not just the government's problem. It is business's issue as well. And you know, as, as, as we are very conscious, business has to contribute to society, give something back to community if we are to see a more balanced society. And I guess we sit on the side of conscious capitalism or a more social capitalistic approach to doing business, a more responsible, sustainable environment for everyone. So I think grants are part of it, but I think it's actually changing the other factors from government. And from a business perspective, I'd be very keen that businesses also provide ongoing training. Now, developing an employee value proposition is going to be critical when you've got less people to attract. How are you going to keep them? So broad skills training, general training, a whole host of other things, flexible working, etc., will all become part of the norm. But in addition to that, I would also encourage companies 
to work with their employees and be very specific with some elements of training that's absolutely needed for the next three to five years to give those people the skills they absolutely need right now and then for the next period of their career. So I think that that's a very important part uh, for them. Technology, artificial intelligence, robotics, absolutely inevitable that they're going to come in as part of the solution to increase productivity and they are prime examples of areas where employees will need skills training to make best use of this equipment. Um, there's no point in having great robotics and then five people standing around trying to get it to work when really one person ought to be operating two machines and seeing it through and that's why the education process and the ability to work in this new environment is going to be so important. We've advocated as Grant Thornton for some time. As we entered into COVID, we, we highlighted the risks that were going to come about. We encouraged our clients and business in general to look at their strategies. Strategies pre-COVID were great, but COVID has acted as a big derailer or accelerated a number of the issues and problems Please. in the economy. And if you haven't revisited your strategy, do so now. Do not assume you're going to go, oh, it's been COVID two years, I'll resume my old strategy. The markets move forward. Everything has changed. You need to work out who's profitable, where your cash is coming from. And the old phrase of sort of turnover for vanity and cash for profit and sanity is never more true than now, especially as we enter an era of inflation and potentially increased interest rates. Focusing on core will also be absolutely critical for business. Um, outsourcing will be the norm. You're going to have many more, business is going to have many more problems recruiting and keeping staff. Therefore, you want the staff you've got, your employees, focused on the real core needs of the business and then outsource the rest to experts where you can have flexible resources. And I hear the concerns about, oh, confidentiality, no one else understands my business, all of the ones that we've heard for years and years. And it couldn't be further from the truth. Um, actually, outsourcing people, whether it's outsourcing your marketing or outsourcing financial aspects or outsourcing any aspect. Facilities management. Facilities <laughs> management, exactly. Um, is a great way of enabling someone else who is an expert in that field to take the load and support you. And most outsource organizations are only successful if the clients they're serving are successful themselves. So there is alignment already with the client organization. So I think if we look forward now, um, yes, a number of areas, training, employee value proposition, skills upgrade for immediate needs, technology, robotics, artificial intelligence, and more will come in. I think we should be clear with our strategy, be clear with who our clients are, and really focus on core, outsource the rest. Yes, challenging times ahead, but actually I'm really optimistic. I'd love to be 30, 40 years younger and coming yeah, into you're, this. You're not far from there. I wish. <laughs> um, I'd love to come back into this because I think there are going to be so many business opportunities that uh, will be created by this change. And entrepreneurs will grab those and turn them into really successful businesses. And that doesn't preclude old businesses changing because if you look at an old business, it's established, it's got a client base, it's got a reputation. What better platform could you have to build forward? You just need to modernize the strategy, modernize the leadership and approach that you're taking, and I think success will be there. I'm very optimistic for Thailand, optimistic for business, but we must be realistic about the challenges. There are challenges. Two final questions. Firstly, you mentioned Japan, and Japan has been facing this situation for a long time. In fact, there's villages in, in Japan, I think, where they, they've got the most number of people approaching 110 years old. Is there anything, one thing that Thailand could learn from Japan and the experience they've been through? There's actually quite a difference culturally between how Japan has approached its super-aged population and potentially how Thailand could. Culturally in Japan, they were not keen and are still not keen to bring in significant amounts of foreign labor to support. And secondly, the female workforce in Japan is still not fully integrated in the way it potentially could have yes. been. But I do think, yes, there are lessons to be learned because we can see, one, what is going to happen with the super age population, and then we can take those learnings into Thailand where we have much more flexibility. 
I, I think you know um, an example I would use is is perhaps if you're in the hotel industry or healthcare industry with hospitals, is it such a far stretch to create age community environments and then move those into more demanding healthcare environments and then into healthcare or hospitalisation for an ageing population? There, there will be a significant number of opportunities and I think by looking at Japan and I'd also raise uh, New Zealand, Australia, uh, parts of Europe uh, and America for the sort of technologies and structures that are best suited to an ageing or super age population. Mm -hmm. Thailand's uniqueness is that it's way ahead of the curve apart from Japan from the rest of the region. Indeed. Final one. Traditionally in Thai society, it's the family that looks after the elderly. But if this family has got to go and start contributing to the workforce, coming back to your last point, is that going to change? Is, is it going to be sort of this whole effectively cultural change whereby we don't have the young people to look after those old people? And is that going to be filled by migration or where does that come from? Yeah. You raise a really good point here, Ian, and, and going back to some of the earlier comments I made, what we're seeing now with a falling birth rate and population here is that actually the age gap that people are having children between generations is getting wider and the number of children less. So the traditional family environment of three or four generations living in a compound enabling one generation to go out, maybe the parents of the youngest children to go out and work and be looked after by the grandparents. That is being challenged. Urbanization is also challenging that because people have moved out of maybe agricultural background, close family units, and they have moved into the city. They've taken up apartments. They're living away from uh, other generations. So we've already got a breakup of maybe what was a traditional cultural approach here in Thailand. If we now take it forward to the next 10 years, 20 years, where we have this super-aging population, we are going to have that problem. So I think part of the workforce through productivity will be about retraining people who may be from nursing or move into aged care and, and that sort of facility. Um, it may be some import of um, overseas labour to come in with, with specific skill sets for uh, carrying out this work. But again, I think it, it's yet to be, I think the options are plenty. I think Thailand needs to choose which way through. And in reality, it will probably be a little bit of this, a little bit of that, sure. and whatever, as it emerges. Cultural change? Absolutely. Yes. I think it will. It's inevitable. Okay. But again, I think Thailand's up for this change. Well, thank you, Chris. Thanks for joining. Thank uh, you. Some really insightful information there, uh, some great observations, and uh, obviously some challenges, but as always, we, uh, we remain <laughs> incredibly positive uh, and at the opportunity. So there you are. Some interesting issues that businesses need to look at in, in, in developing their strategy and developing how they will go to market and perhaps they've been looking at new markets. And remember, should you need help, in looking at the, your strategy, looking at those markets, looking at how you're going to structure your business, we're always delighted to help. Get in touch. Thank you and see you next time.